do that one. Do Mr. Luck. <laughs> oh, hello. What on earth? Holy mackerel. I, is this live? I don't know. I hope I don't say something that'll get me in trouble. <laughs> Spot on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there are thousands of Christian creators on the internet right now that you do not know about. Welcome to the Christian Creator Spotlight, the place where you can find new or existing Christian creators in five minutes or less. You're about to watch a roulette of Christian creators that are able to share what they create for five minutes at a time. This show is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. So if you want to support what we're doing with this brand new show, sign up to be a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash memes for Jesus. All right, let's check out some creators. This is just going to be a five minute expose of creators that you should be following. And uh, like I said, this is always shooting from the hip. But if it gives you five minutes to talk about what you do, that's what I want. I want Christians to find other Christian creators. And that's that's really it. Let's do this. Here we go. Five minutes on the clock. Cool. Um, my name is Than Christopoulos. Uh, I am an atheist turned Christian. I work in philosophy, history, theology, and all sorts of like fields of study just related to the Christian faith. Um, my main focus is actually, believe it or not, I'm not try, like, trying to be like the next William Lane Craig. My, my focus and my heart is more for the church um, to equip the church to be able to have like meaningful discussions as 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 Christians when it comes to non-believers um discussions where people can actually have productive dialogue that actually leads to people repenting and placing their faith in christ um and having that changed life i think that's like something that's really important to me because one through a lot of prayer i, I believe that god's kind of led me to starting this ministry but two being somebody that was an atheist and wasn't a christian in the past um i can tell you i can't count how many times i've been in a conversation with a christian before that I asked tough questions and I felt demonized, gaslit, all this other stuff. And it ended up like pushing me away from the faith even more. And I don't want that for people. There's also the reality that when I become a, became a Christian, I still had a lot of tough questions and I still went through that stuff. And I went through like a secret agnostic stage. And the only people that I had there to kind of help me through it was nobody but scholars that I could reach out to because that's what I really needed. Um, it's the scholarship that helped me get through all these tough questions and now i'm on the other side with a faith that's tougher than i've ever had before stronger than i've ever had before it's, it's because god brought me through those trials brought me through all of that stuff through the guidance of scholars and if you've ever talked to a scholar before it's really hard to understand what they're saying and so i want to translate that scholarship so that way people can understand it if they're not familiar with it i want people to be exposed to the bible um, and I want people to be exposed to the scholarship regarding the Bible and not to be afraid of it. We should embrace it. And I love what I do. And I want a generation of Christian thinkers that can be an intellectual force for Christ, but also be a loving force for Christ, not wielding our knowledge as a weapon, but wielding our knowledge as a loving pursuit of truth to help um, non-believers come to know Christ who are indeed intellectually needy. That's all I got. You. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi everybody. Um, like I said, my name is Sayla. I am a very, very, very small artist. I I started drawing when I was really young and I've just been drawing ever since, kind of off and on. And then um, once I started getting older and like finding like jobs and stuff was just really difficult. And I was really dissatisfied with the jobs that were available to me. So I was like, okay, let me just, you know, try and start my own business instead and do what I love. And I was kind of nervous because, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not Picasso or anything. I'm still learning. I'm just like, I'm growing as I go. And I'm really having a lot of fun with it. So I set up, um a website it's called the ko-fi k-o-f-i and you can find me at snoozy cafe so um if you're like if you know me in real life or like you've been um probably interacting with me on the m4j discord you probably know by now that i am a shameless weed and <laughs> i do a lot of like anime art and I 
incorporated it a lot into my style because that is also something I have loved from a young age. Um, and also, I just really like having fun with it and finding the beauty in, in life, like the sky or um, decorating like cakes and stuff, you know, just like small little things you can find. That's really something that I enjoy and I like sharing with you guys and I post a lot on my Instagram. My name is Brandy. I am a writer and an artist. Sort of the hub where everything is that I do is a Facebook page called The Artist and The Beard. And I run that with my husband. There's lots of family content with us and our dog and there'll probably be some bearded dragon content coming soon as well um our whole thing is just having fun faith and creativity in everyday life um as for my artwork i do do commissions and that facebook page is where you could contact me about those um i have a couple examples of my art here so i do a lot of like nerdy stuff if you're into it. nintendo i love it i love it <laughs> animal crossing yeah so there's that uh, i do a lot of like illustration uh pen markers paintings um i'm also a writer that's probably what i do more um i do have a novel available on amazon i have that here too it's under my maiden name but it exists. And again, like all the links and stuff for everything would be on the Artist in the Beard page. Uh, the other thing that I've been doing mostly right now is blogging. And a couple years ago, my husband and I kind of took a, a hard turn theologically and went from sort of the hyper charismatic NAR theological world. Uh, and now we lean a lot more reformed. So my blog is basically like my journey talking about things I used to believe that I don't anymore and why, and just kind of how that whole process happened and how we changed Based. our mind on stuff. Uh, so that blog is at the site called medium.com. So it's medium.brandynk.com. And again, all the links to this stuff is on the artist and the beard. So it makes it super easy to find. The artist and the beard on Facebook. What the heck? I don't know. I'll show you some more art. <laughs> Run out the clock. The artist it's a flower. and the flower. Sorry, the artist <laughs> and the beard. Is that one word? No. But if you do like the at, it's at artist and the beard. Okay. And that should bring it up. Also the novel. So for those of you who are interested in reading, um, it is about a young girl. It's like a coming of age type book. She grows up in a little town that is very isolated. And she later finds out that it's a cult. She decides that she needs to get out of there and she finds an unlikely ally in the cult who leaves with her. So it's sort of an adventure and uh, it's pretty good if I do say so myself. <laughs> uh Hello, I'm Nintega Dario. I'm an animator on YouTube. Uh, I've been an animator for, I think, since 2010. I started out with uh, Claymation. I usually make uh, fan animations of VeggieTales, which scare me, even. For those who may not recognize me, I created a building uh, that sang on Tic Tac that uh, somehow blew up. Don't uh, be racist. I and, am uh, a building. I also do voice impressions. I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a voice actor. I voice, uh, I do character voices for a Chuck E. Cheese related channel called CEC Blender. I also used to commission for 3D renders because I used to render Mario stuff. And one of my renders made it onto the front cover of a magazine called Nintendo Force. There's CEC Blender. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. Um, yeah, I also make wor worlds for a game called VR Chat. I made uh, a VeggieTales world called A Very Veggie Hangout. I also made the Chuck E. Cheese's Experience. Still working on that. I'm also working on a little project called Larry Boy and the Night at Freddy's, which is going to be a fan animated episode that is uh, half an hour, hopefully. Um, and with it is going to be a little segment where the characters reenact a scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, oh, dang. I think I told everything. I'm on DeviantArt also. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, my, my the main the main source is uh, YouTube. I've been, you know, I do some unboxing videos for undocumented VeggieTales merchandise. Uh, since a lot of it surprisingly hasn't been documented, uh, I am in heavy search for uh, the first VeggieTales live show since that is lost about 50, I think about 85% of that show is lost along with um, the Silver Dollar and Dollywood shows. I, I do keep in contact with some big idea people uh, who have caught wind of my work on the Twitter. But yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> with two minutes to spare. Yeah, <laughs> with two minutes. Can you do some of your impressions, dude? I I love impressions are, like- Are there are there any in particular you'd like to hear that I, I may be able to do for you? So I know that you can do VeggieTale voices, right? At least with- Oh with yeah. Uh, this is Larry the Cucumber. And this is Archibald Asparagus, hello. And this is Mr. Lunt. I'm a very decorative guard. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you. Do that one again. <laughs> do that one. Do Mr. Lunt. Oh, hello. What on earth? Holy mackerel. Is this live? I don't know. I hope I don't say something that'll get me in trouble. <laughs> Dude, that's spot on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you. it. If, dude, if you could spend two minutes just singing his cheeseburger, I I might die. <laughs> oh my god, I might die. I may I may actually sing cheeseburger in paradise as Mr. Yeah. Lion. <laughs> by, by, by who was it? It was something Buffett. Uh, Warren Warren Buffett. All I know is I'm just like you, dude. All I know is Veggie Tales facts. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I made I made this custom shirt. Dude, and that's says, so you're, you're never too old for Veggie Tales, and uh, the only way I'll know someone's not too old is if I turn around and they say, "I found it." <laughs> Dude, I love you so much, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh, how like you are like my inner personality, like my inner demons. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, <laughs> like made into a human. Oh man, dude, I'm crying. I have friends who say I'm like a live-action cartoon, <laughs> which I don't know how to oh, feel. I'm crying, dude. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you so much, man. Just for everything you do. Oh, oh What's thank up? you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you're, you're great. I love your stuff. Thanks, bro. Memes for Jesus has always been a huge, huge, huge proponent of anything VeggieTales. Um, and you're like one of the last people keeping the brand alive, like the real deal, like the actual VeggieTales spirit. Who wants cheese curls? Amazing, dude. Well, all right, man. <laughs> Y'all, make sure to follow Nintendo Gadario. As you, as I mentioned on Memes for Jesus, I'm I'm gonna be sharing a lot of the stuff that he's done already. Alrighty. So yeah, hello everybody. Awesome stuff so far. Total vibe change though. <laughs> I I cannot match. All good, bro. <laughs> that energy, but um. Yeah, so as you can see on my YouTube, kind of that banner, like disciple, husband, father, Marine. Um, my story is probably similar to a lot of people's of, I grew up in the church. I knew all the answers. I could probably ace the theology test um, on paper, but really lived a life of unrepentant sin kind of all through high school, all through college. Uh, and that progressed into when I joined the Marine Corps. Um, but that's when kind of I had this shift of kind of experiencing intentional one on one discipleship for the first time in my life. Again, I think it's super easy to go through church and kind of go in and say Christianese. I'm not sure if that's a common phrase, but like Christianese, you know, of just, yeah, yeah, God's blessed, you know, blessed and just kind of not really have any sort of relationship with Christ intimately. So I started getting discipled. Um, and as soon as I really started following Jesus for the first time in my entire life, um, Hebrews 12, 24 was kind of the, the, that's why it's called the better word. It was kind of the, the verse that really um, was the foundation of this, which says, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. One of my old kind of taglines or phrases was in a world filled with uncertainty, we cling to the blood of Christ, which speaks a better word. Um, just as you can, you know, you know, 
see what's going on in the world and just really clinging to Christ in and through that. It has kind of recently shift, shifted. You'll see those two latest thumbnails. I think I'm kind of shifting more towards, you know, for, you know, Peter has this phrase in both of his letters um, that he's, he's writing these letters in way uh, to stir them up by way of reminder. And so I think that's really um, my passion. And I feel like really where the Lord speaks intimately to me is just really hopefully putting out content that really isn't necessarily like my reaction to Carl Lentz's latest HBO expose, you know, um, which maybe gets clicks and views. Um, a lot of my stuff, a lot of my growth came from like the chosen content, which it's like, okay, cool. That's great. But I really think I'm leaning into, um, like really encouraging believers, stirring them up by way of reminder to just talk about, um, the things of Christ, meditating on his word, um, and just, yeah, just, uh, doing my best to help those be equipped. And for those who don't have community behind them or in and around them to hopefully be a voice, to encourage them to make one decision that is them offering their bodies as a living sacrifice, sacrifice and living for Christ in and through that. And yeah, it's hard making content. I have a full-time job, married two kids. So it's sporadic. It's random. If you follow me, don't expect like consistent stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's real over here. Both my wife and I work from home and we've got a two and a half year old and a uh, 10 month old. So it's utter chaos. So but yeah, that's a little bit about myself ending with a minute to spare. But yeah, I appreciate the time, Matt. I'm going to take this little break to advertise my shirt. I just made this. It's called Explain This Atheists. And it's a play off of the <laughs> skateboarding Jesus. Basically a Tony Hawk meme where Jesus is like skateboarding in the sky, doing Christ air moves, uh, basically disproving atheism. Uh, and uh, like, you know. It's, it, it disproves it. It's irrefutable evidence. Um, this shirt is super soft. It, it's a tri blend shirt. I personally love it. The art is done by my boy Sword and Pencil. And I've set it up so that uh, if you go to memesforjesus.com, you get this shirt. A portion of the proceeds will go towards foster care. My overall vision of what I want to do with Memes for Jesus and this show, it's basically helping creators and giving towards foster care. Uh, those are two things that me and my buddy Michael Schaefer are extremely passionate about. And that's what we want to use our platform for. Beyond the memes, we want to make sure that you guys are getting noticed and we want to make sure that the foster care system, the kids are getting helped the best way possible. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Nathaniel Allen. I have been writing lyrics since I was 10 and music since I was 14. Uh, I just really felt when I was younger, um, God, placing just a lot of different uh, thoughts and themes on my heart that I have been refining over and over again over the last 13, 10 years-ish. Um, and what I'm in the middle of working on right now is the second half of a two-part concept album called Fissures. Uh, the album is Stream of Consciousness, where every song is uh, something that a Christian is thinking about during his day. And album one is the first day, and album two is the second. Um, and so the first one is Fissures Breaking, and the second one that's coming out here in October is called Fissures Broken. And it's an album uh, really centered around the idea of coming to terms with the brokenness of the world that we live in, uh, in the context of God's love and how those two things can coexist simultaneously, even in the midst of, of pain and sorrow and just not understanding how all of that works together all the time and how that's okay that sometimes it's okay to be frustrated and angry even with God. Uh, we see that a lot in the Psalms, uh, just David and other writers in there just being like, my God, why have you forsaken me? Like, why am I alone? Why won't you do this for me? Why don't I feel you near me? And the two uh, sections of verses that I kind of have in the back of my mind as I've been working on this are Psalm 42, 11, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And then also Psalm 51, 15 through 17. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been working on the last few years. Um, <laughs> 
my first album was produced on this iPhone. <laughs> so, it, and now I have more equipment and just slowly been working uh, on the production side of it. But um, for me, it's always been more about uh, the words and the messages of the music rather than what my immediate ability might be at the time as far as production and recording. My name is uh, Ben and uh, I have uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, right now I'm doing uh, gaming stuff. But uh, I want to start doing some uh, Christian content. I have two videos that are ready to put out and uh, they just got to finish getting edited. And um, yeah, I also have a music channel. I I do, um, I perform as uh, Elvis. I'm an Elvis tribute artist. Uh, but I, I like uh, doing this more of this gospel song. So I try to keep that up. Um, but uh that's kind of basically it but uh yeah that's that's all <laughs> <laughs> let's go good deal yeah so i'm a graphic designer been doing just freelance fun graphic design taught myself on youtube just for fun and then later in my teenage years that i gave my life to the lord and uh figured what better way to use my graphic design abilities than to to make some christian graphics and uh so just for fun i've been making those on the side for a couple of years now just for my own eyes to see sharing them with my family occasionally in the family group chat to get my make my mom and dad proud and give me a couple thumbs up occasionally and then <laughs> and maybe it was and that's really what it was it was just just for my own eyes and then my uh my family and friends but about a couple months ago, I decided, hey, why not? I have all these. They're just sitting on my desktop collecting the uh, metaphorical dust. So I'll, I'll make an Instagram page and start posting random stuff. And uh, threw, threw a couple of uh, things up and got some quick traction with just friends. And then uh, I, all of a sudden, handful of, I mean, it's been, what, five or six months since the page been around. I just broke a, a thousand followers, which I know for memes for Jesus is a, is a little thing, but... Uh, for a small little dude that didn't plan on getting anything, is just more of a portfolio page. It was pretty, pretty exciting for me to have that happen. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for scrolling through all the images. A bunch of random stuff, all biblical based, and my my heart behind it. So the word it's called Light Vessel Co. That's a word the Lord gave me a couple of years ago. Essentially, um, a light vessel is a a ship uh, that was used hundreds of years ago in the 1800s that took light. Uh, put a lighthouse on top of a boat and drove it to remote lake locations and the ocean where light could not be reached. And so the sort of meaning there is that our role as believers is to be light vessels and to take light in places that it can't typically be reached. So uh, that's how I made light vessel. And then the hope is eventually I'm working on turning it into a little bit of a clothing brand now. I'm wearing one of the sample pieces right now it says to the ends of the earth um and yeah so that's that's the goal is i'm picking apart my favorite designs and i'm going to throw them on merch and uh I, I have one shirt that is very simple has no words and just has a salt shaker and a, a light bulb and the amount of times that i have random strangers or non-believers or people i just meet for the first time ask what in the world does that mean and it gives a perfect uh, transition or introduction into sharing the gospel or going deeper than you typically would with a stranger on their first introduction. And so that's sort of the hope for Light Vessel. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's that's that. If you if you are following, if you are listening, that's where you'd find stuff is on the Instagram, which will eventually direct to a website. But sitting beside me is Shiley, <laughs> my wife. Hi. Uh, Hi. Of wife of 10 months whose name is Casey. Oh, she, congrats guys. Thank thanks you very so much. much. Thank she, you. She is also a Christian creative. I, I know I got a minute and a half so I'll No, no, break, no. But Let's share what she does too. I'll do I'll put more <laughs> time on the clock. Let's do it. You're you're the man, Matt. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Here, here. I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset. Hello, Casey. Hi. Okay. okay. Do it. Hi everyone. My name's Casey Brown now, so looking to produce some more music here very shortly under the new name of Casey Brown because I'm married and it sounds better than Casey Pot, and no way am I hyphenating Casey Pot Brown. So 
Anyway. Or, or Casey Brown pot. Casey Brown pot. <laughs> <laughs> not a good combination. Both, both of those are terrible. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. Um, I got saved when I was 16, and right when I got saved, the Lord introduced into my life a desire to make music. Um, and so with that, I've just been leading worship. I'm currently a worship leader at a church here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a passion of mine to, to draw people closer to the Lord um, through writing these songs and sharing them. And so one of my favorite things to do in my free time is have like worship nights. And I love to just introduce some of the lyrics that I believe the Lord has put on my heart to share. Um, and it's always just been the sweetest, most special time. Yeah, she, she is not only a musician, but a baller uh, songwriter, if I will, as she is. As you're looking there, she's only got two songs online that you're looking at there, but she has many more in the works, and the lyrics are like stunning. Some of the, I was about to say it's like they're right out of Psalms. It's because some of them are, you yeah. know, borrowed directly from yeah. Psalms. Uh, shout out to David himself. Amen. Um, <laughs> This show right now brings me so much joy to interact with Christian creators. So if you want to support Memes for Jesus and the ability for creators to get presented to a wider audience, you can become a Patreon supporter, patreon.com slash memes for Jesus. And I'll include that in the link of this video as well. And if you want this shirt or if you want some other merch that Memes for Jesus sells, that's memesforjesus.com. Like I mentioned, a portion of the proceeds is going to go towards foster care agencies. If you're broke, I would like a, a you know a little like or subscribe would be great. Share this if you can. Those are free ways you can help Memes for Jesus and help creators to get their names out there. It's hard to be a creator out here. It's tough. You know, you're creating and you're working. And I know I've been recreating online for forever. Me and Mike have been creating online every day for years. And we know the grind. We get it. Uh, so we just want to help creators the best way we can, Christian creators, to get that spotlight uh, to help glorify the Lord and what they do. So that's it, guys. That's the show.